All right. Why don't we get started? Uh, thanks again so much for joining us, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Kirschgesner. I'm the community manager here at Formlabs. Um, we've been doing these weekly sessions uh, both on Zoom and on Twitch on a variety of different subjects over the past couple of months. Um, obviously, someone's first time here, which is awesome. Um, if you're curious about more of these sessions, um, I'll post a link in the chat in just a moment uh, to uh, check that stuff out, check out stuff that's coming up. Uh, sessions, uh, sessions that have happened previously, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I want to introduce uh, Eric Zarekov, uh, SVP of Business Development at Bellus 3D. Uh, they make a kind of iOS-focused uh, face scanning and, and general scanning software. Um, we've been uh, working with them a lot recently because uh, they developed a really awesome uh, face mask scan scan fitted face mask holder tool uh, that can be 3D printed um, after being scanned with their app. So with all of the COVID related stuff going on right now, um, it's been a really, really popular part for us that we've been hosting on our on our part library. Um, we're really thankful for them and the work they put in so that they made it possible for us to, to put that out there into the world because clearly people are getting use out of it. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, I'll pass things over to Eric, who's going to give a, a demo and overview of of their of their work. Oh, I should mention before we get started, um, at the bottom of your Zoom window, you'll see a Q and A button. Um, please feel free to use that throughout the entire session. I'll be keeping an eye on it, and then once Eric is done with his presentation, um, I'll be reading through some questions, and and we'll we'll go from there. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Feel free to jump into the chat as well and uh, take it away, Eric. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, can you see my screen? Is it broadcasting? We can, yeah. Uh, okay, great. So um, I thought what I'd do is give you uh, an overview of what uh, 3D face scanning is about, uh, show you some applications, and then jump into a demo to uh, give you a sense of what this uh, technology is capable of. So what is a 3D face scan? A 3D face scan is really um, a way to capture the face in 3D using uh, both color and 3D cameras. And you'll see that I do the scan, I'll be capturing my, fed, my head as I turn my face left to right. And it's really a form of photography on one hand because you need to have good lighting if you wanna get the best quality face scan. And we're capturing the face from all sides. And once we capture from all sides, we can reconstruct it to uh, produce an interactive model that can be used. Right now we run on the uh, two iOS, we have two iOS uh, applications, the Bellis uh, 3D Face app, which is more of a consumer oriented application and Bellis 3D Dental Pro, which is an application we made specifically for the dental market. Uh, Bellis uh, 3D Face app only runs on, um, on the iPhones and uh, Bellis 3D Dental Pro runs on both iPhone 10 as well as the iPad Pro. Now to run these apps, uh, what you need to have is the version of the Apple products that have the built-in Face ID uh, camera. So that's the iPhone 10 iPhone 11 and iPad Pro that was made uh, after November 2018. An easy way to determine if your device is compatible is if there's a fingerprint, fingerprint button at the bottom, it's not going to be compatible. So it needs to be an iPhone 10, 11, or iPad Pro. So the way this works is that at the very top of these devices, there is the, uh, it's called the True Depth camera. And inside there is a color camera as well as a 3D camera that's used for detecting if you are in fact you when you sign into these devices. So what we've been able to do is to leverage that hardware. And as, the, uh, as it comes on, it actually captures a 3D image. And so what we can do is we can capture the face completely in 3D in 12 seconds. So what will happen is you turn your head left to right, we're capturing both a color image and what we call a depth image. And we'll capture a sequence of these between 50 and 100 as you're going through the, uh, the capture sequence. And then we take all these 3D images you see at the bottom here to assemble them together, stitch them together to produce a 3D model. And at the same time, we're stitching together all the color images and producing a single color uh, texture map file. And we take both of those and merge them together to produce the, 3D, uh, the, the final 3D OBJ file. It's really quite impressive. It happens very, very quickly uh, on these iOS devices. We also have a, a, a new product called the Bellis 3D Arc Camera. And this is a new intelligent uh, high resolution 3D camera that you see here on the left. And we can assemble up between four and seven of these on a frame that we've produced. You can see them here uh, located on the Arc. 
And that will then allow you to capture the full 3D face in one, basically one exposure. All the cameras will fire off at the same time, capturing all the views to produce the same sorts of results. And so here you can see our sample of both the 3D mesh as well as the, the color uh, version, all in a single click. So once you've captured a 3D face, uh, the next question is, well, what can you do with it? And actually there's a lot of uh, both uh, fun and important work that can be done. One is, is medical. Uh, this is called orthognathic surgery. Um, here what's happened is the 3D face has been scanned and um, uh, put into a, an application called Dolphin 3D. And here you're seeing a simulation of jaw surgery. As he turned his head, uh, you'll see that they're moving actually the bone structure inside the face and you can see it changing. And so it's a way for previewing what might happen in surgery for different types of jaw, um, jaw surgeries. Another is dentistry. Um, we have a very strong presence in dentistry. So here what's happened is that a um, patient came into the office, they wanted to get a better smile, they had chipped teeth. So the patient was scanned, was brought into our Dental Pro app. We aligned the face scan we took with uh, the dental scan that was taken, brought into specialized software, uh, registered, new teeth were designed, and in the same day, that patient came into the office and walked out with a veneer showing them what they could like if they wanted to do permanent work. Another uh, application that we're seeing is custom eyewear. So be able to scan your face in 3D and do virtual try-on, and also be able to do uh, bespoke. Uh, the next one's actually really fun. I'm not going to show this whole clip, but this is using it in entertainment. Uh, we, the team scanned our faces and we put them into a Y2K uh, basketball game and, uh, and, and played the game. And so it was really quite, um, it was really quite fun. I, I'm not a gamer, but seeing my face uh, in the game, there I am, uh, really was quite, uh, was quite exciting. And, um, and possible because now they have the 3D views, you can have the players uh, from all sides as the game unfolds. Uh, another area, this is I think more close to, to home in terms of 3D printing, is doing uh, uh, chess pieces or fantasy figures. There's a company called uh, uh, Minute, Minute Min Miniatures that does these fantasy figures. You scan your face and they can put them on fantasy figure bodies that they've had for printing that they then sell and also for different types of figurines that you can pr you know, produce or magnets. Uh, Lego head toys, mini bus and headshots. So all sorts of fun, fun things. And then most recently, as Dan mentioned, uh, we've got involved in the COVID response. And so you know, both of our applications, both the Bellis 3D face app and Dental Pro, allow you to scan your face and produce one of these, what we call mask fitters that you see here. The mask fitter is basically a frame that we generate automatically uh, around your face in three dimensions. And that allows you to then put on a surgical mask or basically any other filter material that you have. And that creates a peripheral seal that fits tightly around your face to, um, to provide you with more protection than you would just with a surgical mask by itself. Uh, we offer this um, in three different styles. There's a basic style, which is free that you can print off and print on your form labs printers. There is a, a standard file and the standard here allows you to emboss your name and some other encoding on the sides of the, of the mask fitter. Um, the mask fitter is then attached using these hooks you see up, up the top and bottom. And then we have a premium version, which uh, has these little uh, clips in front. And what we found is that the seal actually is so tight that it, when you're wearing these masks, they billow in and out. And so uh, to keep the, the mask from touching your lips, which has the, the problem of getting it moist and that it reduces the efficacy, you can actually have the, the, um, the clips will clip the front part of the surgical mask so that it doesn't billow out. So all three versions are available. You can scan your face uh, uh, for free, generate the file, and then you can export the STL file for, for printing locally, or you could send it to a fulfillment house that we have listed for printing. Um, just some examples of people actually using them. We worked with Loma Linda Hospital in Southern California, and they've been using them in their hospitals. It's been quite rewarding seeing this. We're getting a tremendous amount of people that are scanning and printing these uh, mask fitters per day. It's upwards of 3,000 people per day are starting to scan here. 
And then we're doing some advanced work uh, on developing a full face mask. So using the same technology for form and fit, we can take the shape of the face, we extrude it out to fit into different types of filter receptacles. Here, this is part of the uh, stopgap uh, NIH effort that's going on. And here you'd place in a rectangular N95 or other material filter that clips on to find a, a more full, fully fitting mask. And this is an alternative here that we have that has a circular opening that you could place any material over and use a rubber band or elastic to, um, to attach that. So with that said, let me get on to some demos. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here and uh, show you an actual face scan that I'll do on my uh, iPhone. So let's see here, I'll share my content. Start broadcast. Check to see if that's coming onto the screen. There you go. It's on, okay, great. So I'll go over to my app here and hopefully you should see a live viewfinder. Is that coming up? Yes, indeed. Okay, great. So um, to do a scan, I'm gonna take off my glasses and my headphones because otherwise they'll become part of my face. And that's not really something I want. So I'm gonna be radio silent for about 12 seconds as I go through this. At the bottom, you can see I have the option of scanning either just my face or my face and neck, or to do a full head, in which case we'll take the face, the neck, I'll tilt down, and then we reconstruct the last part of the head. Just for time-wise, I'm not gonna go through the full head demo, but I do wanna show you how to do the, uh, the, face, uh, the face scanning. So um, once I uh, start the scan, I'll click this round button at the bottom. I'll turn my head left, center, and then right, and then back again, and then you'll see the results. Look at the camera. Turn left. Turn to the middle. Turn right. Turn to the middle. Capture completed. So it was about 12 seconds to, uh, to do the scanning and then probably another three or four seconds for the reconstruction to happen. All this is happening, by the way, directly on the device. So it's uh, all taking advantage of the, uh, the powerful capabilities of the iPhone. So there you see the scan. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit and you can see there's a lot of detail and you can see actually the individual hairs in my, in my eyebrows there. Um, so I can zoom in, I can turn left or right. Now initially it comes on with a watermark. I can save it and uh, get rid of the watermark. But what I'll do here is I'm just gonna go back and bring in a previous model that I've already scanned, which I did earlier this morning. So there's the, there's the scan. Now I can export this and I can export this as an OBJ file, uh, a, uh, an STL. Um, and then use that to do to go ahead and do the printing. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how the um, mask fitter works. So I'm going to click mask fitter here. Click next. Here you see the options. I'll click standard. I can put in my name. Click next. And then automatically we're going to create that mask fitter file. And so with that done, there you can see the mask meter that is perfectly conformed to my face. And then I can unlock it and then uh, print it. And there's the mask fitter by itself. So that's a, that's a quick overview. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing here. I think I'm back here. Um, this should show you some of these products uh, live. I talked about glasses. Um, this is, uh, this guy here is a pair of glasses that was made by a uh, Italian company called Thema Optical. And what they do is once they scan your, your face uh, in store, they can uh, then you go and pick out these different blanks and they'll do a CNC and actually uh, print out uh, carve out the, the frames for you to take uh, that day from the store. Uh, 3D figures, as I mentioned, these are color figurines. Uh, Lego heads. <laughs> yeah. 
And then this is uh, the mask fitter that I mentioned. So this is conforms directly to my face. You know, I put the I put this over uh, directly on top of a you know a filter. So that's a quick overview of what uh, of what our technology does. Um, I don't know if there's any questions that might have come up, but uh, uh, yeah, nothing yet. But I I got some to get us started, and like I said, please feel free to drop them into that Q and A function at the bottom, and we can definitely get to some of them. Um, they don't have to be about three D printing specifically. They can be if you have questions about Form Labs. Uh, Formlabs COVID response stuff, or more generally about um, Bellis's uh, 3D scanning work. We'd love to talk about that as well. Uh, but yeah, Eric, just to start, I'd love to know just uh, what was that, the initial development process like for the, the mask fitter plugin? When did you guys decide to do it? Right. What was that process like? Yeah, so uh, our founder, um, Eric Chen, uh, he and I worked at Apple about 35 years ago. He's been involved in imaging for a very, very long time. And uh, once COVID started um, having this breakout, we started seeing this lack of available supplies. Um, the common occurrence at this time was for people to start using surgical masks. And he just had a, a brainstorm. He, he, he started putting on his own surgical mask and realized that there's these gaps and realized that there was an opportunity to have a, a stopgap short-term fix while N95 masks were still coming in. Uh, mm -hmm. in the inventory because they were just depleted. And so with that, uh, it was a very, very fast uh, development. We've gone through now, I don't know, probably 25 or 30 variations of the of the mask fitter uh, design. And um, yeah, the first one up and running in a week, I think it was published within eight or nine days after his first idea. He was working around the clock and then we've just been getting feedback uh, from different people as uh, as we've gone forward. So it's been a fast process and the time span between the original mask fitter, the mask fitter with, uh, you know, with, with tenting and mm -hmm. now all uh, the variants with the full face mask, it's been very fast. Sure. Um, yeah, we got a question here. For, we'll get back to the mask in a moment, but Matt asked a good question here in, uh, in the chat. Uh, what about scanning other, other items, other body parts? Example, my wife recently had foot surgery and I was trying to figure out how to print a rigid protector for that part of her foot. Oh, okay. Well, I hope she recovers uh, quickly. That's always a tough thing to go through. Um, the, uh, our focus is 3D face scanning. Um, there are many applications out there that are general 3D scanning applications, but we felt uh, the face was an important enough area that it really required uh, our full attention. And there's a lot of information that we're taking advantage about the face to produce the quality of scans we have. Um, we understand that there's a face in, 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 you know, when you start scanning, we understand you're scanning a face. There's two eyes, there's a lips, there's a nose. And if you look at the quality of the mesh that we produce, um, there's no noise. I mean, it's, it's an incredibly clean 3D mesh file that we produce. And that's because we have understanding about the characteristics of the face that we know to look for and to refine for during the process. Uh, we have gotten a lot of requests for different body parts like hands and feet. Um, but at this point, uh, we're re really still focusing on the face. It's our, our focus as a company is really on personalization, and the face is probably the most personal part that anybody has. And we're uh, we're still quite busy with those applications. Where you, that we probably face and ears, right? I guess I'm yeah. getting ears is is up there as well. Um, awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, Good question here. Uh, how how are how is Bellis connecting to the partners you guys are working with to produce these masks? What have those relationships been been like so far? How are you finding people? How are they finding you? That sort of thing. Oh, okay, for in terms of uh, providers, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I'd say the interesting thing about this technology is that once it exists, um, people just start coming to us. Uh, they'll, they'll come to us either through our um, our website, con you know, contact uh, at bellas3d.com or, uh, or they'll contact us directly through LinkedIn through somebody they know. So uh, mm -hmm. we've started to publish, we're, we're just now starting to expand those, um, those providers that we've developed relationships with. And um, you'll see that within the app, you actually, when you finish scanning, there's a button where you can indicate that you want to have it fulfilled. And then you click on that and that mm -hmm. would take you to, to them where you can send the file. And that's you connecting with, I know uh, we, we've, we've been working with you guys and uh, Make Lab in NYC a little bit. Is Correct. That's how that works is, is the, the order then essentially goes to them. 
Correct. Yeah. So uh, Make Lab has been uh, has been great in New York City, and we've got others that are coming, and there'll be a range. There'll be a range depending on the type of printers that are being offered and used. Mm -hmm. uh, another good question. So, uh, and I'll speak from Form Labs really quick. During all this, we've had to adjust a lot and make a lot of um, adjustments to who we do business with, how we do business, all that sorts of so, sorts of things. Just looking at the the mask fitter plugin in your app, um, has this made Bellis think about other types of uh, uh, kind of easy built in plugin like that that you just hit a button and it it does it? Like, is this is this all these events getting your your brain moving in that direction in any in any additional ways from here? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, we've we earlier on had a, a marketplace where um, we. Um, develop relationships with providers to do 3D figurines and crystal prints. Uh, that's another area that that came up. Um, mm -hmm. In general, what we find though is that some of these applications tend to be uh, vertically specific. And so we have an iOS SDK that we offer where a developer can develop their own application to customize for that particular use case. And so that's what's uh, gone on in some of the medical fields for sleep, uh, sleep apnea, sleep, CPAP masks. Mm -hmm. um, there's other applications in the works for beauty face masks, doing customized uh, beauty face masks um, to apply at night. Um, as I mentioned, eyewear. So it's we find that we've offered a, a general uh, face scanning application. The COVID happened, and we thought that was a, something we felt we could contribute to the community, and so we we d developed that ourselves. But in general, we tend to focus more on the core technology, and not mm -hmm. so much on the vertical applications. Sure, and allow them to. Yeah, I was curious if uh, if uh, other companies you work with have the ability to build plugins like the mask one in in your software, or is that something they would have to do outside of it after the the full scan is completed? Oh no! So if someone uses our iOS SDK, they they basically get in the same underlying structure for scanning that we use in our application. So they would have their own branding, their own uh, you know their own look to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I noticed somebody was asking about um, looking, wanting to be able to look at the mesh. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to uh, mention that one from Vincent. Let's see if I can get my, there we go. I'll go through and share my screen again. So can you see my screen now? Yeah. yeah. So this is, uh, this is the mesh uh, for me. I think it's a scan I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's with the, the texture on. And is Mesh Lab something uh, you guys developed, or is that a third party? No, no. Mesh Mesh Lab is a third party. Uh, Got it. Free download. Uh, it's just it's been a very easy, three D viewing application that uh, mm -hmm. that we tend to use. So that's the uh, that's the scan there. It's cool when the, uh, yeah, that's all. That's all. Like the 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 color data is built into the the scan. That's really neat. Yeah, the texture map. So. You know, there's a lot of detail that we capture, and, if, and what makes us also unusual is that. Um, I kind of zoom in here a little bit more. There's actually some fine level detail that you can see here on my beard that we've actually got some proprietary technology where we're uh, taking information from the color image mm -hmm. and actually using that to apply and uh, develop some detail within the, um, uh, within the mesh. So as you can I'm see, familiar this, with that process game... a little bit for games and things like a, a bump map where it's essentially you're baking a 3D some variability in 3D into a 2D texture. It's something like that, I assume. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm not sure uh, specifically what you're referring to, but it, it's it's some proprietary technology we developed mm -hmm. uh, for this. Very cool. Uh, awesome. Uh, next question I'll have is is one that I'm sure is either your favorite or least favorite, but uh, why no Android? <laughs> oh, uh, so that's um, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, to get the high quality scans that we're getting right now, uh, we're using the 3D, uh, the built-in 3D camera that uh, Apple has on the Apple platform. And because Apple, you know, once they develop in a platform, it tends to extend. Mm -hmm. uh, once we developed for the iPhone 10, it then it became available for all the iPhone. 10 family and then iPhone 11, all that family. And the Android phones, there are some phones that have 3D front facing cameras, but uh, they're very few. And because Android is not such a uniform operating system, 
it would require us to develop a separate application for each of the variants. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Apple, we do it once. So it's not a lot of leverage there. And if you look at, you know, there's hundreds of millions of devices now out there with Apple's uh, true depth camera. And with Android, the number of cameras out there for a particular model that happens to have a 3D front facing camera is very, very small. And so, um, so that, that's why we, we haven't really gone down the Android track. You would need to have a peripheral camera. Got it. You could connect. Until they have a cohesive unified hardware yeah, standard exactly. that you can, and, and you can point by, to. And by, by, by Android by its nature is, is, is fragmented. It won't, won't do that. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, although I, I'm, I'm seeing, we're seeing more and more uh, visibility now with uh, 3D cameras coming online, like Apple's iPad Pro as the world facing 3D camera. Not mm -hmm. quite as high resolution as the 3D camera that we're using for the front facing, but um, I think it's nevertheless a stimulant to uh, uh, to have more 3D data yeah. um, uh, available. Because right now I think they they're mostly using those front facing ones for for uh, uh, like AR type applications. Yeah, the world facing is is for AR for measurements for capturing. Yeah. Um, but these are all this is all very early stage. I mean. Yeah. Uh, the, I think the ability for 3D, camera, uh, 3D cameras to capture information and for that to be synthesized into knowledge mm -hmm. um, is going to be very, very powerful. So once I can point my 3D camera, for example, at a TV or a bed or a product, and you're gleaming an understanding of what that is, the first that it is, a, it's distinguished from the, black, from the background that it in fact is a, an object, and then identifying what it is, um, is just going to lead to a tremendous growth Mm -hmm. of uh of applications absolutely uh, another good question we have is is uh let me pull it up here um who are you seeing as the biggest users of mask fitters uh, medical retail individuals and i know you, you're by its very nature your product requires a a one-to-one -one, um scan to person so mm -hmm. have you talked to any hospitals about how they're sort of approaching a, hey, we want to make one of these for all of our staff? How yeah, we... that's, that, that in fact has been happening. So our work with uh, Loma Linda um, early on, they did uh, some qualitative testing to make sure that uh, as they did put on these masks, did they, could they detect aerosol tests? Mm -hmm. And their qualitative studies uh, showed that it did prevent the detection of aerosols, which was an indication of leakage. And so... Uh, they have been using it within their hospital and we're getting now inquiries, especially from the dental community mm -hmm. is right now uh, the dentists are given to go ahead and start opening up to not only protect the dentists and the, and the assistants, but also it's being required for the entire staff within the dental office. So dental and medical is, um, is very, a, a very strong first wave, but also just in general, as people go back to work, they want to have a level of protection um, that doesn't necessarily have to be N95 level protection. They're not in high risk environments. Mm -hmm. They're more in, uh, you know, in restaurants and uh, or out in the field, but they still need to be protected. And so, um, and, comfortably. For, and so for that reason, uh, we've set up uh, a system to be able to do bulk orders. And so a company can contact us and we can organize it so that all the scans for a particular group or company will get, get fed into one job order and then we can help a uh, customer work with a fulfillment house to take that job order and um, have one central building and then to to uh, fabricate and ship to one address for disbursement. So I think, I, mean, yeah. I think the thing to understand here is that uh, this whole phenomenon with masks is, is, is here to stay for a while. And so to be able to get a comfortable fit, a personalized fit, um, is really quite important. Yeah. I don't know if you saw any from Vincent there in chat, but he says, uh, recently worked at ResMed Sydney, delving CPAP masks, the AirFit F30i is the one project I worked on. Capturing facial features of our customers via various scanning technologies was always the challenge. The Bell's workflow is quite nice. So. Oh, good. Glad to hear go. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also saw a question, uh, someone asking how, how can anyone with a 3D printer help? Uh, I'm happy to jump into this one. Um, basically, with all of the COVID-related parts, there are two broad categories. There's um, parts that require uh, some sort of FDA approval or biocompatibility approval, um, ISO 9001, ISO the other one, but these are very strict standards that uh, companies producing medical devices must adhere to. Um, with 3D printing specifically, uh, if a part is going to end up touching your skin, 
uh, or any other part of the body, um, that means you have to go through those hoops. Um, and therefore, the, comp the places that can print um, things like swabs, like Foreign Labs is doing, or uh, other things like that, um, need to be done by a facility that's, that's able to. Um, and, and you'll know if you have those certifications. Uh, on the other hand, there are a bunch of other things like the, the Bellows Mass Fitter part and a bunch of others we have in our part library that can be um, printed by anyone and they should be and we want them to be printed by as many people as possible. Um, I put, put a link to that library in the chat a few minutes ago. I'll put it in again in just a moment. Um, but yeah, because these parts aren't touching uh, skin, they can be done with whatever 3D printing technology you want, whatever method, um, all that kind of stuff. And we really want people out there, individual users especially, make them for your family, make all that kind of stuff. We, we want to get these wide and hopefully get Bellis to go wide with it because uh, it's a really cool thing. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of broad answer to that question, which is a good one. Um, Oh, another one from Vincent here. Uh, oh, great! Uh, Vincent would like to discuss doing a follow-up article. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's chat. Um, either with me or with with Eric, we can get you in touch. Uh, let me see if we have any other last questions here. Let me make sure I put that link into the library so we don't forget. Cool. Well, Eric, this was an awesome overview. I really appreciate you you doing the demo. Um, really Happy helpful. Uh, we will um, release a recording of this video. And I think what we're going to probably do is slice out your demo portion and use it as sort of a tutorial um, for okay, how people sure. can, can do the mask in the future. I think that would be awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you so much for coming. As always, uh, formlabs.com slash formlabs dash sessions to get uh, the rest of these uh, sessions register, see the old ones, the recordings, things like that. Um, Eric, if folks have additional questions for you, what's the best way to get in touch? Uh, you can uh, certainly send me an email uh, at uh, e for Eric, Zarakov, Z-A-R-A-K-O-V, at bellas3d.com. Uh, visit our website. Uh, you can also press on the contact at bellas3d.com, and uh, we will take a look at that. Um, if you are interested in getting a mask fitter, uh, please uh, download either of our two apps, uh, the Bellis 3D Face app or Bellis 3D Dental Pro. Uh, both will allow you to scan your face and to create a mask fitter frame. You can get the, uh, the basic frame for free and the standard and advanced have a small fee to uh, generate and get access to that file. Great. All right, Dan. Well, thank, well, thank you so much, much for your time. Yeah, yeah this was this was fun. great. A lot of really good information. And uh, yeah, have a have a good day, everyone. Stay safe out there, and we'll we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.